Thank you. Yeah. Uh, next weekend will be fun. I don't know what to expect, but I hope that I arrive home in a you will a different manner. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean, we can see that. Well, I mean, no, no, a better manner. Oh, you're like, oh yeah, Brad. You're- now, do you know what it entails, or it is a surprise? I have no idea. Uh, hey, everyone, this is Raw Dogs. The, well, then my, I can't say anything, obviously. My bachelor party is next week, but that's what we're talking about. Yeah. Yeah, hopefully it's just uh, we, we go to um, Zad's and sit at Zad's all day and never leave. <laughs> yeah, you know, it, uh, I just want to spend the entire day talking to some uh, chain-smoking middle-aged mom. I've never seen a sad-looking <laughs> place. Hey everyone, believe it or not, we are a podcast about video games and beer and beer and video games. And this month, uh, hangovers and Castlevanias and Castlevanias and hangovers, at least a little bit. Dylan, you look very fresh. I'm actually quite fresh. I got a decent amount of sleep last night and I wasn't really drinking. So I drank a lot and then slept not so much. (laughs) (laughs) It's going to happen. Did you get caught up in the bachelorette party? No, I got out of here before they they came back. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, that must have been quite early in the morning. I don't know. Oh uh, yeah, we were we watched heavyweights last night, which was great. Yeah, watched <laughs> tried to watch some of the the fight. Couldn't get it on the TV. Mm-mm. Yeah, legally, legally. Shh, quiet. And uh, <laughs> and you're Tyler. My name is Nate Van Schindel. No one's sure of his last name, but that might be it. In my phone, he's Nate Van Whatever. <laughs> uh, and I'm Dylan. I'm back. I'm ready to go. And I'm Brad. And uh, here the Dogcast is part of the HyperX Podcast Network. Check out podcast.hyperx.com mm-hmm. to check out all the other amazing shows. And uh, welcome uh, to the podcast this morning, or whenever you're listening to it. But this was Brad sleeping a half an hour ago. Yeah. And we are talking about Castlevania this month, a series that I fucking love. I really do love Castlevania. I love I have a conflicted feelings about it. I'm going to make a prediction. Mm-hmm. You've probably played most of the handheld Vanias. Mm. No, actually. That's surprising. Uh, I've played a lot of, like, I played Aria of Sorrow and what's the other one for the DS? Dawn of Sorrow. Dawn of Sorrow, yeah. Every DS game needs to have DS as an abbreviation. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. It's pretty neat. Yeah. It was neat the first 20 games that did it. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know. They, like, jump through hula hoops or, like, jump through hoops to get to where they need to be. You know, I like like the series in general because uh, it's just, like, a classic video game. But it doesn't, like, hit the spot all the time. Yeah, so what what is your experience like? I didn't really start playing Castlevania games until I got the Wii. Yeah. And I got it from the Wii shop. So you were playing what? Castlevania The Adventure Rebirth on there? No, I was playing... Well, they had the original like uh-huh. NES Classics on okay. there, and I played through those. Yeah. Difficult as balls, as you guys probably... Because you guys played a little last night, right? Yep. Yeah. I was still sober when we started playing. So I actually like really played it. Once we hit the PS2, we were drunk. Yeah. 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 Wait, did you get all the way through the three games? No, no. We just wanted to play some of all of them. Okay. Yeah. To to get familiar. But so, yeah, I I probably started playing the original games around the same time as you. But my first Castlevania was Symphony of the Night. I think that's a lot of people's introduction. Yeah. It's the PlayStation. It was very um, accessible and open to a lot of people. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. And... I don't want to make a kid play those early games. I mean, it's, it's, it's good to learn that the world's not fair, but <laughs> <laughs> when you have those flying Medusa heads coming at you and you're just like crying because you're like, not again, please. Oh, was, oh man. They, I get hit every time. I know. Every single time. And <laughs> Simon jumps like an idiot. So he has a deliberate jump. Yes. And it's kind of, I mean, I don't want to compare everything to like Dark Souls, but uh, it's deliberate gameplay it needs to be thought out and you need to know what Mm -hmm. you're doing yeah and you can't just button mash you can't just no throw jumps around if you're gonna make a jump you gotta know your what you're doing but was yeah was yesterday your first time playing castlevania you know i think my dad had one of them growing up so i will count yesterday as my first time because who knows what that game was that i played on my dad's super nintendo when i was a little kid well as if if no one who's listening is familiar which it'd be Kind of weird, but also not unheard of. Yeah. 
these games, there are so many of them. Yeah. There's an absolute metric crap ton. There is a lot more than I anticipated. And yeah. there's no clean, easy way to say, oh, there's 25 games because mm-hmm. I, I have issues when you just remake the first game. Some of the remakes yeah. I would consider new games. Some of them are like bad spiritual successors, redos. But yeah. Uh, so there's there's a metric crap ton, as you yeah. said. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yesterday was my first time playing Castlevania. Um, but I did watch the Netflix show when it came out yeah. first before anything. That's a very well done show. It's very good, which it yeah. also kind of covers the uh, the time. I, I imagine we're going to get into the timeline at some point. There'll be an episode where we do the extremely annoying timeline of video games. Well, it's better than Kingdom Hearts. The Castlevania one's actually pretty heavy metal. Well, the the first two seasons of that Netflix show are, is basically basically Castlevania Three: Drax Curse. Yep. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. the one where you play as Trevor, right? Yep. Yeah. When you're running around as Trevor and, and Sypha. Simon is his grandfather or something like that, or great grandfather. Gr- uh, great grandson. He's he he. Trevor is the Simon's original. grand great grandson. I think father actually, right? No, it's great. I think grand, it's I think it's grandfather. I think it's great grandfather. According to Captain N, which we watched one episode yesterday, he's like my great grandfather Simon started it. So. Yeah. <laughs> oh God, I forgot about that. <laughs> Because it's, oh, it's a prequel to the entire thing, Dra- uh, Castlevania Three. It yeah. was when it came out, and now is it's, that, has that changed? Now that is not the first game in the timeline. Oh my god! Okay. There, the timeline is uh, all over the place, and we'll talk about that. I've on been, an, I've been episode, bamboozled. It's a great show, though. I love it. Oh, it's it's full of wit and charm, and I think the final season is. The final two seasons are just okay, but that season two was rip roaring Castlevania. It was yeah. really good. Season two is my favorite so far. Yeah. Oh, and yesterday, I since I hadn't played the games before, I got to see Alucard spelt out. <laughs> it is just <laughs> Dracula backwards. This is your first time knowing that he hasn't played yeah. Symphony of the Night until yesterday. Like he, is, I didn't he even is, play it yesterday. Nate he is it. green. So yeah, I wanted to make sure he played it. In well, uh, something that you'll find out as we talk about this too is that. It they they take a lot from other existing properties. This is not the first time an Alucard has existed within the world fiction. This is not just something a Japanese man came up with. <laughs> if he did, it's genius. Like just spell it backwards. Um, and it doesn't sound bad. No, it's actually a dope name. And he's I, a cool character. What are our names backwards? So we've got Nylad. Darb. And what did we Nylid, say? Nylid, not na- no, it's Nalid. Nalid isn't bad. Nalid isn't bad at all. No. Fun fact, Alucard comes to the 1943 film Son of Dracula. That yep. was the first time Alucard was used. That yeah. guy's the genius then. <laughs> we want him to like be obviously part Dracula, but we don't want to say it out loud. It reminds me of that bit from Scrubs, Dr. Acula. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like People to, realize it too late. <laughs> I like to picture this guy in 1940 like writing his story and then he drops all the pages and it lands next to a mirror and he sees Dracula <laughs> reversed and he's like, it's gonna, I'm going to name him that. Bring me my pen. That's the ticket. Yeah. I need mm-hmm. bring the quill. And then, then like, close. yeah, tries to do Frankenstein backwards and he just can't even write it out. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I wonder about the origin of this and I assume you're going to get into it, yeah. but it's so inspired by movie monsters, especially like the universal movie monsters. It's, Appropriate. I mean, that's really what they went for in those first games. Yeah. They've moved away from it a little bit, but uh, even yeah. so much as the very first game, there's film reel like holes on all of like one, two, and three. You can see them. I think two as well, but one and three for sure have the film reel spots, which is which is a real vibe. I think my first time thinking about this or like really considering like what the game is because i kind of didn't put a lot of thought into it it's one of those nes games i remember an old boss of mine we were talking about video games and he said when when my cousins got castlevania for christmas i was blown away at how good it looked yeah for an nes game this game looks fantastic and 
Uh, for an NES launch game, um, I, I came out like maybe a month or two after the yeah. system arrived in America. It's hard to it's hard to get those dates down though too. And uh, it looks great and it sounds great. That was one thing that you noticed right away, Tyler. Yeah, the soundtrack is baller. Did they not beef it up for the uh, collections? No, those are uh, original. Okay, NES glory. It would yeah. be a crying shame if they did. We talked about the music a lot yesterday. The soundtrack through pretty much every single game we played was fantastic. There's not really a dud. Uh, one thing that this series does a lot is, oh man, Vampire Killer is a great song. We're going to use it in every Castlevania game from now on. So you'll hear redone versions, though. It's not like the same one, right? which it's great. Well, it's funny. When, once you get to Super Castlevania Four, which is a remake of the first one, it... Uh, yep. It uh, they use Simon like it's what's it called Simon's theme for the first one? It's do 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 do. That might just be Vampire Killer. There's Vampire Killer is like there's Vampire Killer. There's Bloodlines. Uh, the beginning is the theme from the third game. There's sure. there's a lot of good music. Okay, whatever the song was in stage three of game one is the best so far. Mm. Oh, that or the PlayStation Two one. That one had no business going that hard. Oh, well, Symphony of the Night. Wait, is no, that what you were playing? PlayStation 2. Oh, sorry, yeah. Uh, I, what game did you play on the PlayStation 2? Laments of Innocence. That yeah. soundtrack goes hard. It goes way too hard. Even though it's a bad game. It's. I think it's a misunderstood game. But uh, it's Machiru Yamane again, and it's her mm. follow-up to Symphony of the Night, and the game is just falling apart and just barely walking. And then yeah. this song comes on, and we're all like, "This is okay. This is yeah, a pretty good mm-hmm. game." Just with the music, I could. We were saying like, we could keep playing this. Yeah, it just didn't simply feel for the soundtrack. It didn't feel like Castlevania until the music. Yeah, yeah. But I uh, like God of War before that. Series overview: <laughs> If you're not familiar, series of horror themed action adventure video games created and developed by Konami, created around are centered around the Belmont family, clan of vampire hunters, and their seemingly eternal fight against Count Dracula. Mm-hmm. Uh, the first game. Uh, these are known in Japan as Akumajo Dracula, and every single podcast I listen to always has to mention the Japanese name, so we're going to follow in that tradition. And Akumajo means, I always forget. Uh, well, Demon Castle? Demon Castle? That's what it translates Dracula's to, Demon Castle? Castle Dracula. Demon Castle Dracula. I like that. It is pretty heavy metal, and that's, of course, they couldn't bring it into America because, like, Americans were prudes. We can't handle demons. Well, that was the height of the satanic panic, so I don't think they could have anyway. But uh, it, it it's funny. Is the castle Castlevania, or is the it, land the, surrounding it Castlevania? The castle is named Castlevania. Okay. Matthias Kronkfist decided he wanted to call his castle Castlevania. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the name, but <laughs> the name learned so much. <laughs> the name Castlevania was created by Emil Heidkamp. Konami of America's senior vice president at the time, he thought Demon Castle Dracula wasn't wouldn't be appropriate. He actually mistranslated it at first to Dracula's Satanic Castle, and oh, he yeah. was like, "Well, we don't, we can't do that." No, well, it's actually a really brilliant title. It rolls off the tongue. It's also like campy and cheesy sounding too, yeah. though. It's like it's Transylvania, but it's the castle. <laughs> I think I think at least he got the vibe of what it was supposed to be. Like if it's kind of like a film reel kind of situation, I don't know. That seems about right. Yeah. Castlevania seems like a B horror movie that yeah. you would see in the 50s and 60s. Oh yeah, definitely one of those creature features. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. uh the creature of the Black Lagoon or something. Yeah, exactly. Which I'm sure that you fought him in some of those games somewhere. Like every, oh, yeah. it's just a, it's like a love letter to movies. Um, oh, I mean, there's a whole pit of them in Symphony of the Night telling you, oh, you're not supposed to go here yet. <laughs> yeah, go back up there. You're not, you're not supposed to be down. There. Uh, so for the a really long time, no one knew who was the creative creative team behind this game because Konami didn't let you put your name in the credits. They didn't want people to poach their staff. So if your name was. Uh, Kanuyo Yamashita, and it was her first composing experience. She actually gets credited as James Banana. <laughs> that takes uh, <laughs> that takes the saying like, uh, how does it go? Uh, it's not paranoia if they're after you to a whole new level. 
It's funny to me too. It just sounds, it sounds a little like college football where they're just like, you don't get recognition or anything really. This is Notre Dame. We don't put, you don't get paid. Well, I mean, yeah. they get, at least they got paid hopefully decently for Castlevania. Is, with the Cap, sale. is Capcom just sitting with binoculars in a van looking for someone eating a banana, trying to figure out who the fuck made this music? <laughs> well, <laughs> do you think they, do you think they release certain games where they were just like, yeah, you can put your names on this. It's so weird uh, to not give creative people the like the right to have their their names on it. Well, I, I would be a little upset. But it's it's why they should unionize. I would frankly. have I would have used Seymour Butts and then legally <laughs> changed my name to Seymour Butts after the game came out and Ooh. been like checkmate. Can I, I, I would maybe just go with like James Banana, but if you want to go Seymour Butts, alcoholic. Okay, that's good. There you go. <laughs> And that they actually were Sounds using like a Bart Simpson calling into Moe's prank. <laughs> I, think that, I honestly think that might be where I heard it. <laughs> well, and a lot of them were uh, like bad puns. A lot of them were just like references to actors from famous movie franchises. Or Bella like, Lugosi and yeah, Frank yeah. Einstein or something yeah. like that. Uh, but the director and designer of this game, the creator of the series is Hitoshi Akamatsu. Uh, he was very strict about the player controls, the timing of the graphics, and the resulting effect of pressing a button. He's, yeah. He was very focused in on making sure those were all aligned. Uh, very particular about the way controls felt and make sure they were satisfying to the player. They, mm-hmm. they felt right. I don't know if I was satisfied <laughs> sometimes. Um, I, think, I think the deliberate nature of it. I think also uh, there is, there's a real chunkiness to him, but it's a weighty feeling. That's, yeah. We we were talking about that because every Belmont just has this like intense power walk. <laughs> we went to Vanguard and I was walking up to the bar just like heavy foot and <laughs> and they always they always have their like shorts or their skirts up high so you see their thighs and they're just thunder thighs like they're weird oh, yeah. tunics yeah well they <laughs> what did they base Simon Belmont off of I think they based him off of Schwarzenegger right. Um, Big barbarians, probably Conan the Barbarian. Yeah, yeah. that's that's probably where I they get got some, it. I mean, looking at the cover, I get some He-Man vibes. Well, you're looking. These are like we have a few of the games in front of us here, but getting He-Man vibes is appropriate. Uh, for, but primarily for four, there. These are like this is the American one. Yeah, uh, these might not have been what they look like over there. Oh, but can I see the four? Yeah. What wound up happening though is like they they went for an art style of barbarian. They wanted big, strong dude. And at some point, they turned into beautiful gothic fuckboys. And I have room for all of those in my <laughs> Castlevania heart, for oh, sure. Oh, as do I. As do I. Man, if I was a kid back in the in the 80s, like this art style would have been right down my alley. I mean, it's like, brilliant. I've, I've debated getting posters of that like yeah. i would i'd put that up in my house yeah i mean like i mean that's a whole different ball game like yeah. we're, we're looking at a symphony of the night poster with alucard uh with his blade to his head and it's uh, it's beautiful i'm gonna be honest with you when i need my mind to wander a little because yeah. i have add i always either look to there or the suikoden poster and i'm just like oh okay i've got uh, something to kind of focus in on i got jar jar <laughs> Despite Konami uh, breaking all, like my heart so much, your weird the past fetish has no place here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Konami's Sorry. got a lot of posters up here, <laughs> and yes, you do have a Jar Jar fetish. It's my Pizza Hut cup. It's beautiful. I need to find a straw for it and actually use it for like football games or something. Does the straw go through his head? Uh, through the back, okay. uh, like down his spine. Mm-hmm. Sweet. Yeah, so you can Sweet. feel like you're draining his fluids. There are some <laughs> things from my childhood that I'll find when I go home, and I, I like I immediately yes, you are coming with me. Yeah, absolutely. Jar Jar is one of them. Mm-hmm. Um, according to Hitoshi Akamatsu, Simon's weapon of choice is a reference to Indiana Jones. That's one of the reasons you have a whip, because he also just thought Indiana Jones was a badass man's man, which is true. Doesn't Everyone say. always wonders about the whip, but what a novel choice, too. It's got some reach. It it's got a weird pairs. wind up, too. Yeah, you have to time out your attacks well in advance of something coming for you, yeah. which is really cool because you can't spam it either. Yeah. Uh, it when, goes. It goes back a little bit and then forward. It goes wet, wet. Yeah, and it's and then the upgrading for it too. Yeah, the upgrade system. Uh, it's interesting. So, I was yesterday Tyler's very first time playing any Castlevania, and he could not figure out the jumping timing oh. or the whip timing. In like the first like practice room, he was just getting destroyed. It was so funny. Oh, yeah. really? Just that first level where the zombies are coming after you? Well, I had a major problem with the first game 
for a while because I was getting the jump button and the attack button confused. And then I would figure it out, but my brain is not wired, apparently. You're for wired to PlayStation. And, and Xbox. I wanted X to be jump so bad. Yeah, it'd be easy. Uh, I think laid out better on an original NES controller because with the, the Pro, it's got like the X, B, and A. Yeah, and, then, and so like and they they, they, they double translate. them up a little yeah, bit. Yeah, they do. Yeah. So if you yeah. have like a preference, but that makes it confusing too. Like they oh. should just lock out the other ones. Once but. I got to the one on the N sixty four and the jump button was in the correct place, then I was I was. Ooh, you guys played the sixty four one? No, we didn't play sixty four yesterday. Yeah, we, yeah, we did, didn't we? No. The what three, was the it, one where the first one where you could 3D. like? Oh, that's that was Super Nintendo. Super Nintendo. That's this one. Oh, okay. There's something incredibly valuable to your complete uh, ignorance of these video games, Tyler. It's fascinating watching you play these because yeah, I things that wish I, I was there. Things that I have known forever, like oh, the stairs. You, it's obvious. You just hold up and you go upstairs. You gotta and do you, a kitty corner. You gotta be on the right yeah. spot. Mm-hmm. And Tyler's like, no, I don't. I'm not gonna figure this out until you say something, Brad. Yeah. You, you didn't realize it was just going up on the pad, up and left well, or I, up and right? I, I nailed the stairs pretty early on. Stairs were good for me, but then... Then going did, down the stairs when, like, oh, I never expected... That can, that can immediately... But I never yeah. expected to go down. Mm-hmm. I spent so much time trying to get to the top, and now I'm going down again. I didn't expect... I thought it was going to be a very linear playthrough. So left if I'm, to right. If I'm going up for this level, I'm going up for this level. Hey, listen, everyone knows Castle go only up. Yeah. <laughs> Castle go only up. <laughs> uh, I think my biggest takeaway from these games that the games that we played yesterday so yeah. far was just how like modern they kind of felt with the way they were laid out. And especially once you got into like almost that, like that free roam one in the second one. Yeah. Plus the upgrading system and all that. Yeah. I think, well, the second one, especially that is, that is such a game ahead of its time to an annoying degree. And it kind of bit off more than it could chew. And I think upon like critical reevaluation, a lot of people are like this is actually cool if you know where to go and what you're doing. Yeah, because all the towns look the same, and all the fields and plains generally look the same. There are a few different hazards, but I actually found it better to control. Yeah, Simon's Quest. Yeah, it's actually become one of my favorites. Yeah, because now I kind of know where to get the orbs. Yeah, which is important, and also the little tricks to get said orbs. Um, so. The first game, uh, also composer we want to mention, Satoa Terashima, they composed The Vampire Killer. But getting into gameplay, uh, the whip has upgrades, Mm -hmm. and you get these upgrades by hitting candles. Uh, Igarashi has said later on, well, the candles are the souls of people Dracula's captured. All right, whatever. That's kind of dope, actually. It's better than just candles. Yeah. And it explains why they just are popping up everywhere, I suppose. Well... And one thing that could confuse a new player, how do you feel about the hearts not giving you health? <laughs> well, <laughs> Nate, Nate's like, those hearts are doing nothing. <laughs> Brad told me right away they were currency. They're essentially currency. Currency or ammo. And yeah. so like, I had that in my head right away. Plus the game, it felt like we were saying earlier, earlier deliberate, like the controls, you can't just button mash through it. So no. I almost had like a, like a from software predecessor vibe where it's like this game is supposed to be challenging you're supposed to be you're supposed to figure out how to yeah. do it and it's not just going to hand you everything mm-hmm. but they probably should have done like something that wasn't hearts i guess because <laughs> i could see how for somebody who didn't have brad sitting next to them i would have been like what the fuck do i i'm not getting now, any help uh were you whipping walls to mm-hmm. find turkeys yep <laughs> yep <laughs> i did find one all by myself which was cool that's an early uh, Dylan on the dog cast joke. What do we call him? Shifty? I don't know. He did artwork for the guy who just goes around putting meat in walls. <laughs> <laughs> I, it's on my Instagram so I'm going to put you right in there. <laughs> don't go running away, turkey. <laughs> which is funny. The food heals you, which is fine. That makes complete sense from yep. every other video game you've ever played. But when you see hearts, you're imagining like Legend of Zelda where it's just like heart equal heart. Yeah. yeah. Heart equal heal me. Yes. Yep. But instead it allows you to throw knives. Mm-hmm. Yeah, or boomerangs. Yeah, or okay. Axes. I guess I have a question then. What's your favorite uh, projectile? Uh, probably the boomerang or the axe. Okay, I, I'm I'm very fond of the axe just because there's enough too. situations where I can't hit something above me, mm-hmm. and it's a way to make it safer before I go up a flight of stairs. See, I'm a holy, or downstairs too I'm because a holy it goes water up and down. boy, and that's the one that burns them right yeah. in like an area of attack. It kind of it, it hits the ground and then it goes a little forward. 
And I think it, in the first one, it doesn't right? go forward. Um, it's like you just throw it at the their feet, and oh, then it yeah. like kind of blows but up. But that's good for bosses that are more stationary. It can stun lock a lot of the bosses, yeah. and then if you level up your sub weapons, where you get the one, two, and the three. If mm-hmm. it drops the two or the three, you can have like two there at a time, so you can just have like three damage stacks. Yeah, that's how a lot of people do beat the enemies. Dot baby. What was the one that was it? The rosary that freezes, or so, is that kill everything on screen? The rosary isn't a sub weapon, but. It, it will spawn and it just kills everything on screen. What's the one that froze the enemies? The stopwatch. Stopwatch, that's right. Yeah. That one's okay. It, it's situational and it's, it's a Medusa head necessity only. It, and also, Kinda, yeah. some of those guys that shoot projectiles at you, you can just pause it and get close and get in a position. But Medusa heads are one of the original uh, annoying enemies of well, video games. One of the great things about this game too is that it does incur you can use your own play style, but they do actually give you those power ups pretty deliberately. And like they'll be like, you'll probably need this one for this area. And then they just give it to you. So if you ever change are changing them out, if you see a new one, usually you should get it. Because they're like, this is kind of how we intended you to do it. You can go against it because honestly that boomerang still kind of rules. Yeah. The boomerang was really nice. Yeah. It's more of a propeller. It's I always called it a cross, but it kind of seemed like a, I always thought like, oh, it's just a cross. Like, oh yeah, if you, could you imagine he just chucks a crucifix at him? And I mean, at least the church would sell a lot of crucifixes, I guess. I mean, is is Simon canonically Christian? <laughs> I I don't. Uh, well, originally Leon, his ancestor who started this all, was a knight for the church. Sure, I and think- then he had to go and save his fiance who got kidnapped. And then he's like, I need your help. And they said, if you leave this war, you're out of the church. We don't like you anymore. I think they have to be Christians by almost necessity, though, to fight Dracula, correct? Sure. I I think they fear God, but I don't know if they would adhere to uh, the tenets of, like, modern religion. I don't even know if they necessarily adhere to God, I think. I think Simon sleeps in on Sundays is what I'm saying. Yeah. 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 Simon sleeps on Sundays. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> my thighs are aching today i am not going to church <laughs> are you kidding no he never skips leg day he you just, don't get thighs that he wakes up and just day. has three hours on legs yeah <laughs> i imagine him mar- marching up through the aisles to get his communion over. <laughs> <laughs> and the priest is just like oh this guy is so cringy <laughs> this is gonna take forever he kind of walks like the milverine a little bit just like oh yeah yeah very yeah. broad yeah, if you don't know who the Milverine is, it's uh, this very famous local character who uh, in Milwaukee here who looks like the Wolverine, but he loves exercising and going down the street without a shirt on. Yeah, and he he looks scary the first time you see him. He's a nice guy. I've met him a few times. He's really nice. I've talked yeah. with him a couple of times too. No. Yeah, I wasn't considered a, Mo- a Milwaukee resident by a lot of people until I saw him for the first time. And I, he lives close by here because I see him all the time, which is kind of fun. He does live in Bayview somewhere. I saw him quite a bit when I lived downtown. I saw him with a shirt one time when he was on a date. Oh, he was on a date? Where was he on a date? Nashville North. Oh, okay. And he was wearing a shirt that looked brand new and it said Nashville North. And I said, they made you put a shirt on and they probably gave it to you to come in. That's pretty good though. Yeah. And then his date made him, one, made him dance and he didn't move an inch. He just stood there like holding a whip, you know. He is <laughs> Dan- not. dances like a two by four. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we should cast him in our uh, Castlevania movie. <laughs> He'd be perfect. Yeah, doesn't talk at all. No. Um, and something else that uh, to deal with like enemies and jumping. Mm-hmm. If you get hit by an enemy, it sends you backwards. Yeah, which uh, if you're on a precarious ledge, platforming is bad enough, and then this makes you just like. Double scared now. Every time you jump in, there's like a Medusa head coming and you have to platform. Well, the the worst part about it is once you, if, if you want to go with the old uh, way of saying it, once you go to a different board, this is how I've actually had people, this, Matt describes it this way. Okay. He's like, oh, it's a different board. If you're on a, like, especially if you have a bunch of stairs going up, there is one where if you get hit by a Medusa head, it sends you down. Really, you should end up on a platform below, but nope, you're dead. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, that happened to me yesterday where if you, I know there's ground below me because I just walked up it. But once it's off screen and you get yeah. knocked out, instant dead, instant, yeah. instant death. Yeah. 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 It doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. That I know what you're talking about. That yep. happened to me a few times. And he falls so fast, too. If you uh, accidentally just walk off a ledge, he just drops like <laughs> oh 10 times God. regular gravity. Turning on stairs. During that one level yesterday was... That was brutal. That was... 
what was that? Super Castlevania? No, that was maybe three. It was. I think it was three. It was three. The, it was the first one where you could choose which way you were going. Oh, uh, yeah, that is three. Yeah. And then there are also money bags in these games. You get points. This is something that was like an evolutionary hangover back in the day, and I think people From still arcades. thought points mattered. Mm-hmm. You can get an extra life if you get enough points, and that's cool. But otherwise, I think it's for bragging rights that people don't really care about. If I get to the second boss, I'm like, suck it. Like well, That's mean, all I need for bragging. <laughs> I mean, I mean, you you're into speed running too, Brad. So like, this is kind of one of those things. Like, it's you're doing it just because it's bragging rights. Um, like comparing this to like Super Mario World, sure. Like, the getting coins in that felt a lot more natural than, or like it was a bigger deal. Getting a score in Mario for me in my brain, I guess maybe because I played with my brothers so much. Like we did brag about that, but mm-hmm. Castlevania, I feel like the narrative of the story is enough to propel it forward, and it doesn't need that. Yeah, you are a barbarian in front of a castle. Why and, do I care about bags of money? And the music is just raging. Yeah, all I want is to kill those fucking birds and eat some turkey legs that some dude hit under a staircase. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's all we want. Uh, version differences, the original Famicom version in Japan had a save system because they were on a disc system, so they could save their game. Wait, whoa, Castlevania 1? Yeah. Was on a disc? Uh, the Famicom disc system. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. They Like a, like a three and a half inch floppy disc. Oh, okay. I thought, yeah. I was thinking like compact disc. I was like, holy shit. So it had its own battery, essentially. <laughs> so they could save their games, which is nice. Uh, these generally you'll see these games do become more difficult when they make it over to America. Uh, this game has been re-released and um, remade light redos uh, quite a bit. Uh, in 1986, uh, one came out for the M- MSX2 called Vampire Killer. Uh, the stage is split into three blocks and you like you just keep changing screens instead of it like uh, scrolling with you. Oh okay. And they loop indefinitely until you find a key hidden in like a different spots in different stages. And you can't move on to the next level until you find a key in every one of these like mini blocks. All right. Uh, hearts can buy items from shopkeepers. You can carry two sub weapons simultaneously. Uh, that was the MSX2 one called Vampire Killer. And I doubt any of us have played that. No. no. Uh, people that. I listen to talk about it. They say there's some interesting ideas, but they did not implement them right. Uh, versus Castlevania was a, an arcade port because Nintendo had arcade versions of some of their Nintendo games, and they mm-hmm. just made them like way more difficult because they want people to eat your quarters or they want to eat your quarters. So I wonder why I've never seen one of these in the wild, though. Castlevania is super popular. Yeah, you you won't see versus Castlevania. You I know down at Gallop and Ghost in Chicago they have. The Castlevania, the arcade, because a million of these things are just called Castlevania, so it's right. really confusing. But it's a two-player like light gun game. Mm-hmm. One person uses a whip, and the other one has like shoot spells like Sypha. And that sounds interesting. I play it. Yeah, I'd definitely check it out. <clears throat> and then, as far as Castlevania One re redos remakes, uh, Super Castlevania Four is one, and then there's Castlevania Chronicles, which is essentially just grabbing the story. And making a completely different game. It's Simon Belmont going his first time up the castle and they just make a different game around it. Now I, I'm generally known for loving Ca- super Castlevania four. That was it's that whip system. Yeah. The whip system was a game changer. Dope. That was definitely bar none, not even close. My favorite one I played yes. yesterday. Okay. That's perfect. Yeah. It's, you can deflect projectiles. I beat my first boss in that one. Oh, yeah. it was intense. Yeah. He did not have a lot of life left. Wait a we, minute. I had don't one you hit left. Don't, who do you face as the first boss in that? I was that the horse guy. The it was a skeleton horse and a oh, skeleton yeah. riding the horse. Yep. Yeah. And I thought I beat him, and then he had like one more big attack left, and Brad was like, "Oh no!" <laughs> <laughs> and I barely missed it. It was it was amazing. I love the. Uh, there, I always had trouble with it because whatever, but like it's even on the cover. It's the Hydra battle. Yeah, that's the one that always messed me up. I can't wait. I cannot wait to play that one again. That one was a lot of fun, but I got to play Symphony of the Night first. Yeah. Uh, don't worry. You'll enjoy it. It looks uh, fun. Symphony of the Night's just way different.
Oh, yeah. The original Castlevania came out September 26th in 1986 for the Famicom, and it came to Nintendo May 1st, 87. Castlevania II Simon's Quest, known in Japan as Dracula II Noroi no Fuin, the Seal of the Cursed. Uh, that's what that's what they called it. Uh, came for the Famicom August 28th, 1987, and it arrived in America um, three, three months after I was born in 1988 in December. So this game's about is a little younger than me, but uh, Castlevania II: Simon's Quest famously confusing. Uh, mm -hmm. I believe this was the Angry Video Game Nerd's very first video too. Like this, they added a lot of systems in this game mm -hmm. that were not in the first one, and people were confused. Uh, I think the issue there is American translation. Actually, no. Well, I mean, their their text box is like. They they say the dumbest stuff. The the villagers say the dumbest things, and they're like, mm, "Pearl, go here," mm. and that's actually well translated most of the time. Oh, God. most of these translations aren't that bad as far as the hints they're supposed to get to you. Yeah, I guess get a silk bag from the graveyard duck to live longer, and that's actually everyone's like, "Well, they they botched that translation." And no, the Japanese one is like a guy's like, "Yeah, go get a bag from the graveyard duck. It'll help." And there's no graveyard duck. There is a graveyard, but it, a lot of the NPCs will purposely just say things that don't make sense to fuck with you. They're lying. One guy says, take my daughter, please. <laughs> <laughs> I'm guessing you shouldn't? Well, you, you, I don't know. I, I don't know if he's trying to marry her off or something, but uh, one of the NPC dialogues is... Well, their life is a living hell. <laughs> yeah, true. In that world? Yeah. This game has so many weird ways to advance... The, the plot, you need to collect five different body parts, Dracula body parts in like five different dungeon castles. Mm -hmm. And how you navigate through those castles or find things are sometimes incredibly obtuse. Yeah. It was mad confusing right from the jump. Yeah. You almost need a guide for something like this. And I can imagine that Nintendo hotline was booming <laughs> from this. <laughs> We're in the money. <laughs> you want to know where the graveyard duck is? Give us a call. I've been looking for a mallard for three fucking hours. I don't see a duck. <laughs> well, and some things like you need to press a ruby against the Deborah cliff. You have to equip it and go to this cliff and kneel and wait long enough for something to happen. And the only way you know this is someone says, wait for a soul with a red crystal on Deborah cliff. And that would confuse anyone. Barbara, where's Deborah? <laughs> Kids had way more patience than I do because I would have. I wonder how long. How long does it take? How long do you got to wait? Do you know, you know uh, probably like ten seconds. I think it's a, a not a good amount of time. Like it's pretty long. To yeah. make that Dark Souls comparison again, too, there is stuff like that still in like even like Elden Ring. Oh yeah, where you have to do a certain pose in front of a certain statue yeah. in Lane Dell to yeah. reveal a major secret. Yeah, or that, to save your best friend. Oh, uh, Bach. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can't save him anymore. No, he's dead. You can visit him at at, at uh, in that room and just look at him. <laughs> Here, I brought your favorite needle. Come on, it's <laughs> not so bad, guys. Come on. <laughs> well, and like going to Elden Ring, there's only one character who mentions anything about that statue, and yeah, I, I see some of the design DNA too, where it wants you to explore and try things in the world mm -hmm. and they don't want you to just put this game on and beat it in your first two days they want you to go back and rent these things they want you to yeah. talk about them they want money makers it's very funny because sequels usually up the ante in terms of stories and he it's it's just simon being like god i gotta make sure this guy stays dead <laughs> that's it and they don't really explain too much of the belmont bed uh, bloodline in the first game i don't think but no if you want to be a computer programmer and your last name is Belmont, that's just not allowed. Like, uh -huh. you either need to fight Dracula or fuck. Yeah. Like, that's your only job as a Belmont. Mm -hmm. And you, I mean, honestly, you're kind of hoping you're born in the off season, I guess. Well, you still got to train, though, because sometimes a cult will just bring him back and you're like, I was not supposed to be one of the Belmonts that fight. Uh, sir, I am eight years old <laughs> and I have not prepared for this. <laughs> yeah. But sorry, it's you. But that eight-year-old's quads are still fucking huge. <laughs> just <laughs> just never he's just very bottom-heavy. Yeah, little buff boys. 
Castlevania 2, uh, composed by Kenichi Matsubara. And uh, returning, we have Satoa Terashima. Uh, Kenichi composed Bloody Tears, which has been known as one of the great, uh, great songs. That is truly the best one. Yeah, this game, open-ended landscape, cities, uh, cemeteries, manors, dungeons. You have uh, merchants, and you have to buy stuff. Mm-hmm. One thing that is very confusing is when you go to these dungeons, you need to have a wooden stake, which is an item you can use and not hit something with. Yeah. And it needs to hit uh, a, like a orb at the end of these dungeons. And yeah. if you miss it, you have to go get another stake and come back. Ugh. It's... I mean, I tried with it. I really did. This is a game I definitely beat once with save states. Yeah, save states are important. Very important for this. Um, There's a leveling system. Your health will increase when you collect a specific amount of hearts. Increasing your health uh, increases your health meter and lowers damage taken. Sometimes you need to travel to another region to continue leveling up. And uh, whips can be found or purchased. Once you pick one up, the other one is discarded. You start with the leather whip, then you can buy the thorn whip, which is twice as powerful. The chain whip, four times as powerful. Morning star is eight. Flame whip is 15 times more powerful than your starting weapon. Damn. And it's free, but you must have the morning star and find a person beyond Deborah Cliffs. And that's all I know. And there's probably a graveyard duck somewhere who might help too. <laughs> yeah. Shit. And yeah. Uh, a game may be ahead of its time a little bit. And maybe could have used some reining in. Just a little. It's one of those things in hindsight. Well, this would have been around the time as Link's Awakening. And they share a lot of similar design DNA. Yeah, well, the the, the famous uh, weird number twos in NES games. Yeah. Mario Brothers 2, Zelda 2. Yeah. And Castlevania 2, where... It's the same director. It's not like some other guy came in and it's like, we're going to do something different. It's the same guy who I still just love Dracula and I love movies and we're going to go weird with this. Mm -hmm. And you see a lot of Simon's Quest DNA in future Castlevania games to exploration, leveling up, RPG mechanics. And I think the more you are familiar with this game, the more you like it. It takes a little bit of you kind of have to do a little bit of a rewind for your gaming language. Like, cause there are people like, there are some people who haven't played video games since this point and they like Matt even not to bring that loser up, (laughs) but uh, we love Matt. You're a loser. uh, Yeah, I know. Uh, But he's just like, no, it was really, really good. And I'm like, okay, (laughs) nostalgia glasses taken off. Like I can see its value and I can, and I actually find it to be a little more fun than the first one. But it's also like it's obtuse and you have to consider all things when you're talking about a video game. I'm forgiving of a lot of stuff for old games and I'll go to bat for a lot of them. But also his favorite Mario is Super Mario Brothers 2. So which is good, but not the best. No, it's radishes. Um, (laughs) Turnips, turnips, uh, radishes, radishes, both. Maybe both. Are radishes turnips? No, they're both roots. They're both beets. Beats me. Mm, I believe it's turnips. <laughs> uh, version differences. Again, the Famicom had a save system, and the American ending is wonderfully mistranslated, or just spelled very poorly, too. It says, Simon Belmont put an eternal period to the legend of Dracula. And that's my favorite way of saying you killed someone. I put an eternal period on that guy. <laughs> very eloquent. <laughs> that's pretty good. It's pretty funny. It sounds like a curse that women get when they turn 12. <laughs> 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 uh, and uh, there are multiple endings in this game as well. Uh, <laughs> and it depends on how many days you spend playing the game. Because uh, there's a day and night cycle where things get worse. And you have to beat it within seven days to get the good ending. But what a horrible night to have a curse. It's true. And it takes a really long time to change the night when that screen starts. Oh, yeah. It dips and you got to wait. I got it. We didn't play that one for a terribly long time, but I did play a little bit after the day night switch. Yeah. And that was significantly harder. Yeah. They, they let you spawn right back in where you die, though, which is nice. Yeah. Yeah. It's actually pretty dope. And like, they're they're actually a lot more forgiving in that game, rightfully so. Yeah. Yeah. And we played the first one a lot more than we played the second one. And I feel like the second one, in terms of art style, kind of took a step backwards. And maybe that's because they were a lot more ambitious with other 
mechanics I, in the game. I think they really tried to push all the colors on the NES. And I think they just really wanted to paint with the whole palette instead of choosing something to actually really run with. Yeah, it didn't seem as polished as the first one. Like the backgrounds and... The colors are a little uglier. Yeah, and some of the Mm -hmm. enemies. Yeah. I think they looked better in the first one. Yeah. Yeah. Soundtrack's still banging, though. We're going to take a quick break to hear from some of the other amazing shows from the HyperX Podcast Network, and we will be right back to Castlevania. The Hardcore Gaming 101 podcast is on a mission to rank the top games of all time. I like the idea that when Bruce Wayne gets angry, he switches to the Batman voice. Uh, Why do you have such a problem making boomerang shaped like a bat? You mean like Batman? Not like Batman. Just make it for me, Bruce Wayne. I can't (laughs) even with this guy. It's a Herculean task, and I'd be lying if I said it hasn't taken a toll on our cognitive faculties. Most people would be happy to have a job during a global pandemic. (laughs) Dennis... Hardcore Gaming 101, twice a week, every week, right here on the HyperX Podcast Network. The award-winning Go Nintendo podcast is the best place to get the latest news on the world of Nintendo. We cover the biggest stories, share impressions of the latest games, and answer your burning questions. There's also some general pop culture talk, game music trivia, a heaping helping of silliness, and did I mention our robot companion? I'm the star of the show. Catch new episodes of the Go Nintendo podcast every Saturday on the HyperX Podcast Network. It's Halloween month, and that means it's time to get your setup decked out in a new costume. Get 15% off of all pink products at HyperX.com by using code HXPN at checkout. Whether you prefer the chic pink accents of the Pulsefire Haste, or the snazzy metallic pink of the Allo Origin 60 keyboard, this is definitely the month to think pink. Head over to HyperX.com and check out the selection, and enter code HXPN, as in HyperX Podcast Network, in all caps to get your 15% discount at checkout. You guys, I don't think it was worth it in the long and, run, well, then. <laughs> as long, you never have to skip leg day if you don't have to go on dates. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Yeah. You've, Just, got a, you've got a mistress waiting at home, and she's yeah. called PlayStation 5. <laughs> yeah. Sexy. This is my girlfriend, Sweet. Sony. <laughs> Sony's a good name. That's not bad. I knew a Sony once. Yeah. Uh, hey, everyone. We're back, and we're going to take a, a small pit stop on the Game Boy because that's just what you do when you have a game and it's successful. You just put it on the Game Boy, mm-hmm. and it's not going to be as good. It's going to look and play kind of like people expect, and that's mostly it. Uh, it's known in Japan as Dracula Densetsu, The Legend of Dracula. Mm-hmm. It was released October 27, 1989 for the Game Boy. It came to North America December 15th, shortly afterwards. You play as Christopher Belmont 100 years before Trevor? or at, No, after Trevor. So, no, Trevor, Simon, I don't know. This will be a timeline Isn't discussion. Isn't it Simon Trevor? Um, Trevor is the ancestor of Simon. Yeah, Simon and tune, Trevor. Tune into the timeline episode when we have all okay. of this. This is that's the other outline that's too long. Sure, um, but you're playing as Christopher Belmont. This was also um, the 14th Game Boy game in Japan, the sixth to land in North America. So essentially a launch title, which is pretty cool. Cool. No sub weapons. You can get your whip power ups. This one will shoot fireballs. There's no staircases. You climb some ropes. It's not that good. It's fine for a I, Game Boy game. I've definitely played it on the collections. Yeah, we did not spend a lot of time on it because there's not a lot to take in, really. But I mean, a lot of a lot of Game Boy games end up being pared down versions of their counterparts, especially around this time. So, I mean, what else are you gonna what else are you gonna freaking do with it? I think I would say the only one that really is a decent success is Kid Dracula. Yes, which I that'll which is be very good. We'll talk about Kid Dracula later on um, when we get to the oddities section, mm-hmm. where like tangential relations because I honestly Kid Dracula is very cute it's canon it, to me it's a canon I believe it is canonical in some ways I think it takes place like 10,000 years after everything else though and you're fighting Gallimoth who is one of the bosses in the Castlevania games it just it, it, they they pare everything down the size of Kid Dracula makes sense on screen yeah it kind of reminds me of um the way that you know the first Super Mario Land for the Game Boy yeah. was kind of like, oh, you're really trying to make this and it doesn't quite work. But then they do the second one and they're just like, well, it's just like an easier Mario game. 
Yeah. And uh, to me, it reminds me a little bit of like Little Nemo, Dream Master, the way it looks and he runs around like the Kid Dracula, mm-hmm. like that cute little uh, aesthetic. Yeah. But Kid Dracula is pretty fun and it has some fun little remixes in there. But the Game Boy game. very well. Uh, as, as far as the Game Boy games, Christopher Belmont, there was a five part comic book series in 2005 called The Belmont Legacy, which looked cool. And I think if the Netflix series is successful enough, it'd be interesting if they did one on Christopher Belmont because well, they could really do a lot of whatever they wanted. There's not so that's on the back burner for pretty much ever because there, Warren, a, Warren there, Ellis is the writer for that. Yeah, he's a famous comic book writer. Oh, I've heard of Warren Ellis, and he's been a real naughty boy. Okay, um, he's got some misconduct allegations going against him. The fourth, the, the new Netflix series is already announced. There's a trailer for it. Really? It's uh, Richter Belmont. No shit. It's called Nocturne. Oh. Yeah. They put I some, no and maybe it's a new, another writer or something. Well, if it's, as long as it's the same animation studio, because they know how to, ooh, they know how to animate. Oh. That, that'll be cool. Cause, um, but where's their, they promised us a Devil May Cry anime probably three years ago. Uh, they're, I think they're working on it. I read back when COVID was like first starting that they didn't, they, they took some time off or something happened. Mm. So I think they got kind of bogged down with COVID sure. and everything. Now that's when I want to see. Yeah, uh, there will be every video game ever will be adapted into a Netflix or Hulu or a Paramount or CNN minus well, streaming series. Well, Castlevania came out of nowhere too because it was like it was just a drop that they had because it was yeah. literally four episodes, which essentially boiled down to one movie. Essentially, yeah. yeah. Each one's like 20, 25 minutes, and right? And then it leaves off at the resurrection of Alucard. And that's pretty much where it stops. And, and then they all decide to be friends. The voice acting's great. The animation's great. I, oh, I, yeah. I really liked that, what I've seen anyways. Yeah. Yeah. It gets weird. And speaking of the Netflix series, uh, the next game we have is Castlevania Three: Dracula's Curse. Maju Densetsu, Demon Castle Legend. Uh, this was released December 22nd, 89 in Japan and came to North America in September of 1990. This was the last one directed by Hitoshi Akamatsu. Uh, this game was created to try to outdo the success of the Ninja Turtles game that uh, Konami made. And uh, sure. this wasn't successful enough, this game. So he was demoted and then eventually just l- resigned and left. Uh, people go to bat for this one, though. This is a lot of people's favorites. And I can't argue. This is in my top five Castlevania games. This yeah. is the best NES one for sure. Oh, oh far and away. It yeah. felt like a more of a return to one compared yeah. to two. Well, they also, they really upped the ante on, they were pushing the NES to its extreme limits. And for some reason, like, there's no clippage. Like, the game looks too good, like, art design-wise. And... I don't see a lot of like phasing in and out of like enemies and yeah, it's, which is quite a marvel, which means they had to put some real work into that code. Three was pretty clean. That room with the gears. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's looks real smooth. Everything kind of moved really easily. Like I mean, I, I always try to put myself in the mindset of the people playing it for the first time, because that's the only way I can fairly really give it a judgment but if i were someone who had never seen like the gears in a clock tower working like that and using them as platforms that would have absolutely made me cream it it also really messes with simon's leg physics uh because he wants to drop as fast he goes off a ledge and the fact that the ledge kind of it's still flat Mm -hmm. but it moves around there's points where you think you still have time to jump and you fall so hard Mm -hmm. when you jumped on the gear i was like oh shit yeah, you it, can do that. It, it's, that comes back for this one too. Uh, Super Castlevania Four. Yeah, Castlevania Three is stunning, and yeah. it, it's a return to form in that it's uh, you know we're going left to right, up and down a little bit, but also there are branching pathways. Mm-hmm. So you get to the yeah. end of a level. It's like, do you want to go up to this uh, clock tower, or do you want to go down to these catacombs, these rivers? And you don't also know what that is going to entail. You don't get a heads no. up. So the reason you go up those gears is you fight a boss and you save this person named Grant Dynasty. 
And Grant, <laughs> it might have been, it might have uh, supposed to have been Grant um, Dynasty. Grant Dynasty. But he is, he's filthy, dude. This guy will do anything for a buck. He's just Dynasty. That's what they call him. I'm going to start calling myself Dylan Dynasty. <laughs> it sounds like this guy's about to drop the hottest mumble rap album of uh, 1990. Uh, I think he's more of like a, he's more of a mumble court. <laughs> mumble court. <laughs> uh, the Japanese name for Grant is Grant Dynasty. He's a reference to the historical house who rebelled against Vlad Dracula. So that might have been a real house that fought against uh, Vlad Depeche back so in the day. So it's like, a, yeah, that makes Vlad sense. Vlad the Impaler. The uh, real person. The real guy. The real mm-hmm. guy. But you have multiple characters in this game. You can only have one. But So you go up to this tower and you get Grant and he can turn while he jumps. Amazing. Yep. He walks faster and he can also climb on things. So you can like climb underneath platforms with oh. him. Oh. So you can just skip massive amounts of enemies. Surprisingly with absent from the Castlevania series. How are his quads though? He he's more arms. More arms. He's Actually, a, he's just like a skinny dude. He's kind of like an Igor type. Most right? rock climbers are a he little more like, lean yeah. though. He is very much a lean rock climber. Uh he yeah, he, he can change directions while he jumps. He's a little weaker, but there are just sections that will save you. Problem with getting Grant is you do have to go down where you just came to go to where the, the path split before. You have to go down instead of going up. You have to redo everything you just did to go back to the end of the first level. When, But you can go back in that game. So like, if you choose an up or a down path, does it transition you to the next part of the story? Or can you go back and then explore the path recall. you didn't take? You, you only have to for this one. This is the only dead end where you come back, but it's the only way to get Grant, so it's cool. So you should go down before you go up? Oh, you no, should go up if you, you want down. Up if you want Grant. Okay. But uh, chances are, once you get to some of the other characters, you might get rid of Grant anyways. Sypha. Sypha Belnad- Belnades. Uh, she's an awesome sorceress, and mm-hmm. she can have fire spells, which is like major range. Mm-hmm. Her ice spells can freeze water, and you can just walk over like some areas you wouldn't be able to walk over. Whereas and the Belmont sink like stones. They're so heavy. They have like there's so much weight in those thighs. Yeah, just they're actually, them right down. There's they actually they reach uh, what do they call it? Like maximum velocity. What's the terminal terminal, terminal velocity. velocity? They reach it much quicker than point, everyone. Point else. One second. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. It just <laughs> takes a lot of effort to lift their legs up there so heavy. <laughs> well, they're too busy. their thighs are too busy looking down. Whereas a boat's looking up. Yeah. And, power. and Saifa can also like freeze enemies and then you just one hit kill them after like they're frozen. Uh, and then there's Alucard. He's quite weak actually, but he flies. You can turn into a bat and just fly over things, skip enemies. And that sounds delightful. I think Saifa is the one people say is like the best to use uh, fighting wise, but I would rather just skip everything as Alucard. What do you yeah. got to pick up to get her spells though? Because she starts off pretty weak, doesn't she? She with- she doesn't start with spells. You have to find her books and candles just like sub weapons. Okay. Yeah. Dope. It's, it's very unique, this game, with the branching paths. And there's four different endings depending on which character you beat the game with. Uh, and there's some like fun, some little fun stuff in there. Like in the level with the Cyclops boss, in the background, it's storming. You can see like lightning coming down. Oh, yeah. Super cool. And when you're fighting the Cyclops, there's a point where you can see lightning is about to strike. Like you can see it flash. Mm-hmm. And if you time a dagger throw, right when the dagger hits the boss, when the lightning strikes, it'll do extra damage. Oh, that's cool. Just as if the lightning hit the dagger. Yeah. yeah that's kind of cool. It's weird stuff like that that really uh, builds upon kind of what the legend of these games are. Mm-hmm. And they, they really expand on that in later games. But things, little uh, little touches uh, like that really make me excited about well, these, it. Well, this is also, I mean, it might just be a sign of the time that it was made in, but this is definitely one of those schoolyard games that people would talk about. Had to have been. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, and that's the legend. It's like, dude, I got this guy named Dynasty. It's like, no, you didn't. You can only play as one guy. No. You're he, making that up. He it's can climb on name. walls. No. I remember finding, like, I remember people telling me, like, dude, you just didn't do this obvious thing. Or there was something hidden that you should have found. And I've just me being on the playground, just being, like, sweating. Because <laughs> I just wanted to go home. And I'm like, I got I to gotta try this out. Like, like Michael God. Scott after the roast yeah, episode exactly. where he's just sitting on the swing. Like <laughs> all, all sad. 
Yeah, and you can also enter different names uh, when you start the game. This actually does have like a name entry thing. And if you enter the name Alucard or certain names, you'll actually start with them as your backup character right away. No mm-hmm. shit, that's cool. Which is cool. And there's also password systems. So you can just, if you want 10 lives and to start with Alucard, there is a way to do that. You know, if you enter Stink instead of Link, you just get a big butt that farts. That would be great. Attacks. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> Nate was so close then. <laughs> <laughs> Nate, Nate chose butts for every name he entered yesterday. Oh my God, butts. He yeah. was close. And some version differences. Um, in Japan, they actually had a VRC chip uh, for this release. Uh, we did not have this extra chip when it was released in America and Europe. So our music is noticeably worse than the original Castlevania 3 yeah. in uh, Japan. I'll tell you what, the NES chip can still, still do a better job than the, the Sega Genesis. Well, like we were talking last night, just with the little, like, the little, like, they, they didn't have the capability of making, like, absolute monster ballads, but, like, what they do with the music on the Super Nintendo is absolutely amazing. It goes amazing. hard. Like, it's, it's enjoyable. Like, I would listen to it outside of the game, maybe. People and probably. Do. And there's a reason that um, Vampire Killer, Bloody Tears, and then for oh. this game, it was the, <laughs> the beginning song. It's just called The Beginning. Uh, those songs have been remixed a thousand times for every I, game. I looked up that song that I really liked uh, yesterday. It was Wicked Child. From the first Castlevania? Stage three of the first one. Okay. I'll put that in here. It's amazing what music can do. Yeah. Immediately, you feel it. Got to wait for the breakdown. You can't start and not hear the breakdown. This is just workout music. Yeah, yeah. This is just what's going on in Simon's head. And squat. You really can't take the music out of these games. No. No. I have played it silently, and it's not the same experience. And another difference in Castlevania 3, uh, the nude statues in Stage 8 have clothing in America because kids cannot handle boobies. Uh, another pit stop real quick. We're going to go back to the Game Boy for Castlevania 2 Belmont's Revenge, known in Japan as Dracula Densetsu 2, The Legend of Dracula 2. This came out in 1991 for the Game Boy in Japan, and it arrived in America August of 91. Chris needs to rescue his son, Soleil. Uh... Four castles with playable, uh, different uh, order you can play them in. So it's kind of like Mega Man. You can go to the crystal theme, the air theme, the plant theme, or the earth theme. Uh, Yeah, it's just more of that game. It's (laughs) not much to talk about. But it came out, and it is a Game Boy game. Mm -hmm. But now uh, we have a game that people do love. Some people, I actually am not as hot on this one, but we have Super Castlevania Four. First and foremost, I want to say I think the name is terrible. It is not a good name. Really, uh, it is super. It is super. But calling it Castlevania Four is also kind of weird. Well, in Japan, it's just known as Akumajo Dracula. They just essentially call it Castlevania. Yeah, which makes a little more sense. But also, if they just have a million games called Castlevania, it confuses everybody. I mean, it, calling it Castlevania Four here makes sense for the time period. But now we literally have games, and it's like Doom 2016. Yeah. And it's just like, we we would end up doing stuff like that now. I don't like that but calling convention. It, honestly, calling it Super Castlevania would have worked, because Super Nintendo, Super Castlevania. Super Mario You didn't Mario need Bros. the four there, because they stopped using the name, or the numero, numerological convention after that. Yep, they quit numbering them after this game, because they, after the first three games, they split off and they started making... Uh, Castlevania Chronicles for the Sharp X68000. They made Super Castlevania 4, and then on the Genesis, they made Castlevania Bloodlines, also known as the New Generation. So they had three different teams making different, like, where is this series going to go? We don't really know. Super Castlevania 4 is definitely, like, the most 
direct continuation of the series, but yeah. it's also a soft remake mm-hmm. because it is the same story from the first one. Um, you're very hot in this game, though. Yeah, and when did this one come out? October 31st, 1991 for the Super Nintendo in Japan. Fuck, I'm not even alive yet. North America, December 4th, 1991. Damn. This game's older than I am. Yeah. Yeah. No, but I'm super stoked for this one. This, I felt like right away, I also kind of, we ran a little gauntlet of one, two, and three right before it. So I kind of got used to this. Yeah, I got a little practice then. The whip mechanic is a game changer. Yeah. And then overall, I just liked the way it looked. I liked the way it played. I just, I felt like I had more control over where I was attacking and what I was doing. Plus, they mm-hmm. put the jump button in the correct place on the Switch. Yeah. So that saved me a ton of problems. In the correct place. That's funny, though. It's because it's, what is it? It's B for jump? Uh, Yeah. No. What is that on the Switch? B and then Y. Y would be your yeah. whip, right? You know what's crazy? Uh, I still don't know Switch button layouts. Yeah. It's, a- Xbox, PlayStation, uh all of that's super straightforward. For some reason, oh, that the, ABXY just hurts my brain. Oh, uh, I'm an infrendo, so I always remember. But uh, yeah, well, I know A is the right button in this game. Jump is where the X would be on the PlayStation. Okay, yeah. So uh, that that would be B. B. Yeah. yeah, and then your attack is the square. Left. Yep. So it would be it would be the Y button. Yeah, yeah. But the whip- which is weird, isn't the Y axis the the up and down? Yeah, and the X axis is that that that's the only part that confuses me. Yeah, yeah. The whip having multiple directions does make everything play a lot different. Uh, the fact that something can be above you and you have the option to attack it before you go up a flight of stairs. Yeah, it made me go through the game a little slower because I was very deliberate with like making sure I didn't get hit, didn't lose health, or like I attacked things. If I saw something uh, ahead of me on the path, you know, yeah, I had a chance to actually kind of get the drop on it. Yeah. Well, those whip physics too, they deflect projectiles. Well, not deflect, they just kind of destroy them. them. Yeah. yeah. Which is super helpful on a lot of boss fights, but you also like, you got to wear out your fingers doing that because yeah. you got to, you got to twirl it around in a very specific way. This is, the, this is truly in my mind, one of the first examples of like an actual kind of like, oh, they actually implemented physics into this. Yeah. The spaghetti noodle whip I love it. ability. It feels you, so nice. You just hold the tack out, and then you can just shake it up at things. Yeah. It's very funny. Yeah, I I went with the wet noodle for all the birds because in oh, Castlevania yeah. the first three, like the birds kind of move on that like U shape, yeah, they'll and they'll dip down. they'll dip lower or higher, and it's really fucking hard on like a two D plane to jump and hit the whip where you need to to get them before yeah. they get you. And in this one, you could just flail your whip around. And this is the game where we realized you're very good at fighting terrible giant werewolves and dragons and mermaid people but a bird is tyler's greatest enemy yeah Yeah. oh my god they fucked me up so hard well this also has for the first time you actually there's like a little more theater to it like enemies will animate and come out from the sides of things to come and attack you they're just not appearing from off screen or like the grass will like all of a sudden just get really pissed off and just like yeah yeah uh so you, you killed the dragon, and then there was some grass you tripped over? Yeah, and then a and bird I hit me. And I died. <laughs> <laughs> Just whip the trees, whip everything. It's the key to all of it. You killed nine Medusa heads, and then a crow took you out? <laughs> <laughs> you know it, buddy. Yeah, this is the one where you defeated the horse skeleton ri- ridden by a, a human skeleton. And <laughs> it was intense, and we all cheered for you when you won. Yeah. It was a very epic battle. He had the upper hand for a while there because I didn't go in with full health. And then um, I took him down. I only had like one or two hits left. So like my heart was just pumping. <laughs> yeah. And you also can swing with the whip, which is new as well. I love the grapple mechanics for this. Yeah. It works far better than even like uh, Super Metroid, which came out later. Yeah. The grapple beam on that is a little difficult. And if you do time this wrong, you are absolutely screwed. I felt like it was going to be really clunky because I fucked it up the first time time i did it yeah. and then i got to a jump that was much bigger and brad let me know that i could like go down on the whip to kind of get more length. yeah and then i realized you could actually like use yeah. physics and then it, it got a lot easier after that but the swinging around on the whip just i'm surprised it wasn't in an earlier game because if you have a whip it feels like such a natural thing you should be able to do and they don't use it later either really yeah i, I still have no understanding of whip mechanics uh in the real world 
like how does Indiana Jones whip something and it holds enough for him to swing? And so then the how way, do you undo it? Like, do you just like, so I actually had a lot of practice with a whip when I was a kid. Cause I got a bull whip as a gift from someone. And then I would just practice terrible with it, like, gift cracking. for a child. I was good with it. Okay. I could have snapped out eyes, but <laughs> I didn't. Yeah. Um, I was fine. Like I had, I was given rules on how I could use the whip, but there is a way that you can actually, if you, if you quarter off the ends of it with, um, with like a denser material, yeah, it can latch around things. Okay. You ha- you can't just have it as like the, the tails, you have to have it as something like a little bit thicker. That's why Indiana Jones whip doesn't have tails on it. It yeah. has literally just a solid piece of something. Yeah. So it grabs itself once it loops around, but you have to do it in a specific way. I was able to pull objects closer to me, though, like, let's say you're swinging. How do you tell the whip to let go when you need to quit swinging? You loosen up. You just, like, give it a little, like, flick? So when when you flick it in and then it ropes around something, you have to pull it tight in order to do that. If you release a little bit, it yeah. will release on its own. Okay. Is it because of the speed at which I that- don't know if it could carry a human. I think that is literally just adventure movie type of schlock. But if anybody knows, please let us know. Because I, I don't know that much because I never tried that. I'd be too wimpy to do that. If, if like, how did Dylan break his arm? He was trying to swing with his whip in a barn. Oh, man. I was a cool kid on the block for a millisecond because I was just whipping shit and I was like hitting soda cans. It was so much fun. I had a friend who had a smaller bull whip. Like it wasn't the big boy mm-hmm. thing, but it would still like hurt like like a bitch if you got hit by it. And I whipped well, myself break, in the back of the head. Well, you break the sound barrier. When you whip and crack. Yeah. And that's I, pretty cool. I went yeah. full Monty and just sent it and tried to get the whoosh, and I got it, but the sound wasn't breaking the sound barrier. It was me smacking myself in the back of the head with the whip <laughs> and it hurt so bad. You can really do some damage with that. You can things. take your own eye out with that thing. Yeah. Isn't full Monty mean hanging dong? I don't know. They just felt right when I was looking for a term there. I think full Monty means something about cash, but. I don't know. Well, because there's that movie Full Monty, and it's about guys who hang dong. I'm looking this up real quick. Uh, full Simon Belmonte. That's the name of the... Yeah, Full Simon. That, that's when you show off your thighs. <laughs> uh, the Full Monty, uh, striptease performance involving full nudity, especially by a man, or the full amount expected, desired, or possible. So you did use it right, but it okay. also could mean going Full Monty might just mean you took your pants currency off in public. Yeah. Well, it could mean currency, too, then. that. Well, I'm glad I used it right. I well, I will always perceive it as hanging dong, even if you're using it in the other way. Well, now I am. Brad, I'm so tired about hearing about your favorite movie. I haven't seen it, but I've heard it's good. <laughs> I would watch it. You just watch it in clips. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you're trying to piece together. <laughs> Simon Belmont can also <laughs> crouch and move forward. His thighs. He took, did some yoga classes so we can finally bend them. He's like, "What is a lunge? <laughs> like yeah. A lunge? Yeah. Mm-hmm. What?" It will make them bigger. I'm in. I like this game too because there's a lot more like uh, environmental aspects, like the the rivers pull you down. Yeah, the currents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like the currents a lot. I think those sections are really awesome. I used to really hate that cave part where you're facing all those like weird armadillo caterpillar things. That's as far as we got. I think. Okay. Yeah, because I and the little clay men that like mm-hmm. turn into a million of oh, them as you break them apart. I know, and they definitely use a lot of Mode Seven graphics stuff later in this. There's a, a section where the entire room, room rotates, spins, and yeah. you have to just hold on to like the whip like mechanic. You're just like dangling, swinging, yep. and the whole room just rotates. You have to wait for the right spot to jump off. It's really dope, That's but sick. it's really difficult to judge every once in a while. Save states are your friend. Yeah, for these games. I'm happy the collections actually implement save states. They're not not super easy to do, they're a little clunky, but they're there, so you can just save at the beginning of a level if you want. Yeah. And uh, if you make it all the way to Dracula, uh, there's a stairway that goes up. Instead, jump off, land on an invisible platform to receive full health, 99 hearts, a cross, full whip upgrade, and a three stone. It's a cool little secret. Yep. If you uh, get that far. And in Japan, it's really hard to take you back up to the boss battle. Then you can jump back up pretty easily. And uh, the Japanese version had a shitload of crosses that had to be removed for America, as well as more titty statues. Well, it's so funny, even for like uh, the Dragon Quest series or Dragon Warrior, what what we called it. Yeah, uh, there were so many crosses, and then they just made them, I believe, tees. 
so now that's like a very like common staple even in the japanese versions they stopped doing crosses yeah i no wait it was um gosh what do they do there's still examples of that um where especially because they don't really care about christian iconography there like uh Neon Genesis Evangelion had to get rid of crosses. Full Metal Alchemist had to get rid of crosses. I was going to ask this earlier, and I forgot. Were these games hampered or hindered at all by uh, the satanic panic of the 80s? They were. Well, no, they, and a lot of these were like late 80s, uh, early 90s. But I don't think they caught a lot of flack because it's about killing the things that are evil. I mean, there, there were worse things happening at the time. So, Like Judas Priest? Yeah. <laughs> very offensive. Very <laughs> offensive. No, Super Castlevania 4 was a pretty successful game. I it's not my I don't really care for it too much though. Uh I I much prefer Bloodlines for the Genesis and to me it's just like an awkward transition uh piece. It's trying to do new stuff that I prefer the like I prefer Castlevania 3. I prefer those mechanics a little more, but it is fun whipping in eight directions. You won't I don't think you see this again in the series. No. No, but it saved my ass from those birds and Medusa heads, so I'm thankful for it. Well, the fact that they ditched it and didn't bring it back, did they think it was too difficult of a mechanic? Because maybe it was too cheesy. For some of those enemies, you can just sit there and like, well, you're wet noodle. But I mean, like the noodling of it is a weaker attack. The noodling stays around, though. The noodling will return in multiple games. Yeah, but once you get the upgrade to like the mace or the fucking yeah chain whip, chain whip, like. You can kill a lot of shit just by noodling it. Yeah. Yeah. It keeps you safe, too. Yeah. Stay back. That's why you also have one arm day. What? Yeah. One, right arm only. Yeah. Just right right arm only. <laughs> just a guy staring in a mirror wearing a skirt because he has to see his thighs just shaking a whip very hard. <laughs> yeah. My name is Simon. I'm going to put a period on you. I am a psychopath. <laughs> I am a psychopath. I hate yes. birds. If it yes. flies, it spies. Yeah. Very much so. Oh. Castlevania Chronicles would be the next one that comes out only in Japan as Akumajo Dracula. They just called it Castlevania. Wow. Uh, this was for the Sharp X68000. Game on July 23rd, 1993. Uh, it was remade. This remake was remade for the PlayStation 1. Oh, and that would God. arrive in 2001 for both Japan and North America. Okay. Roughly half the stage of the first game were directly remade. This is considered one of the most difficult games uh, in a fair way. And... Uh, Someone asked director Hideo Ueda about it, and he said, this game is for people who are good at video games. And I was like, that's pretty funny. That's <laughs> that's awesome. That is, is this, such a flex, is, too. Is get this, better. Is well, this the first insta- instance of get good? It might, I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> well, the, every time they go after Miyazaki, it's just like, you should make this easier for the people for accessibility. And he's like, why do you think this game's popular? <laughs> it's because it's not maybe for you. Yeah. Or maybe you should try harder or whatever. Who cares? It's art. <laughs> so the Souls games are great, but they're pretty hard. No Can one... you make it easier? No. Is there a game shark code? Can you fuck off? Well, it's funny because if they added difficulty options to those games too, think about it. Like imagine PvP with difficulty options. It just doesn't work. Yeah. And with those games, like the adrenaline rush of almost beating a boss or beating the boss, like that. It's just like if you made it easy. That panic you feel where you're like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And then they either die or you do it. Is Or they cheese out a secondary hit. Yeah. yeah. Oh man, that's like chasing the dragon. Like, well, that's what these games are supposed to do. They're supposed to be challenges because they're not particularly long, and they can't make them particularly long. So, making them a bit more challenging is a way to kind of, I mean, you could call it padding, or you could call it just like a challenge. Yeah, it's essentially a puzzle. Like you, I think play- there's a fine line between that, though. Yeah, because, I mean, you want to get to the boss. Say you get to the boss right away and you don't have any health. You know going back through where what you got to do to to better prepare yourself. It's the same mechanic that we use in games today. Eventually, yeah. you will understand a sine wave Medusa pattern. You yeah. will never understand the birds. No, the birds, no. Because no. sometimes they swoop low. Sometimes they stay up. Sometimes uh, you'll never figure it out. Yeah, that's why the, the wet noodle is essential in survival. <laughs> yes. The wet noodle, the pool, the pool noodle, the pool noodle, and why it's nice that 
Simon can whip in eight directions for Super Castlevania Four because just, <laughs> otherwise something will be like literally a foot above you. And there's like there's no way I can get to this guy. Right. Yeah. Well, that, that's what also makes it more accessible. It's like giving people more options is okay, but making it easier is not. I think it's all about balance. Yeah, uh, Castlevania Chronicles. Yeah, like I said, it was remade. There's not a lot I have to say about it. I haven't had a chance. I haven't to play played this it. one, but no. Uh, something they did with the original uh, X sixty eight thousand game that's pretty cool. Those uh, they're essentially like computers. Those consoles. You'd have an internal clock built in, so. Um, the painting in stage 21 is a field with mountains. There's a painting and depending on like the calendar, it'll show different seasons. Oh, that's cool. And, uh, like, I like that. It, and then there's also, uh, like spots with clocks where like the time would be different. It would show the actual time, which is kind of fun. That's crazy. Little touches like that. And you can do that in the PS1 version. You have to like go in the menu and set a specific, uh, like you just set sure. a season or something like that. But Up next, Castlevania Rondo of Blood. A very good game. A beautiful game. A wonderful game. Yeah. yeah. We played this one a little bit yesterday, too. Rondo is maybe the height of what they wanted those original Castlevanias to be. It's a little it's it's a little shortened, but the enemies are harder. And it's just gorgeous. The it's beautiful. The effects of this game, uh Richter Belmont is the best feeling Belmont in the like traditional style yeah. games. Yeah. He's a little faster. The soundtrack goes so hard and they do so many different effects where uh, like a that giant, a giant bull fight. just charges at you. Yeah. The, the enemies are all fun. Great animations for oh, like yeah. uh, enemy deaths. There's even some enemies that only appear one time. They're just given this lavish, like big uh, death animations. Like, where great. did, where did you first play this one? Because I first played it. I actually got the first time I played like, Symphony of the Night was on a PlayStation 1 disc, but Rondo of Blood, I didn't play until uh, on the PlayStation 4, they released that double collection for the PSP. Rec uh, are you Requiem. talking about the PSP or the PS4? Well, it's for the PS4, but it was originally for the PSP. Those are slightly different. Slightly different. Okay. Um, it's mostly the same uh, Symphony of the Night. The PSP version of Rondo of Blood, though, is a 2.5D remake. Okay. Uh, but it also includes the original version as an item you collect in the game. Was this right. the one with the water level, where the water level was rising and mm -hmm. reflecting? No, that's the Genesis one. Okay. No, this one we played after that, but it came before. I know which one we're talking about then. Yeah. Rondo of Blood was for the PC Engine Super CD-ROM, uh, October 29th, 1993. And it came to... It didn't hey. come to America until 2007 for the PSP. So uh, they did a, a light remake a different version of it called dracula x for the super nintendo the music's not as good the game is not as pretty that's i showed you a little bit of dracula x yeah and it's just not it's inferior in every capacity absolutely but, um yeah rondo of blood directed by toru hagihara who was a programmer for the castlevania 2 game boy and parts of symphony of the night uh cut scenes cd audio these stages, there's uh, seven stages to play, but there's multiple paths in every stage. There's a hidden back path. So there's 13 stages all together. Uh, you need to find four women that have been kidnapped. One of them is your girlfriend, one's your little sister, but you have to explore. If you want the good en ending of this game, you need to find these hidden paths to rescue these ladies, which also will wind up affecting the game. Like if you don't save this one lady, she appears as a vampire bo uh, vampire boss later, which is pretty cool. That's a that's cool. But and if it, you didn't know what was going on to begin with, that might be confusing. Yeah, they also add uh, the ability to stage select after you beat stages. You can go back and just choose to go to different wow, levels. That's, that's so smart. Yeah. I mean, that's just like, like to let you replay levels instead of going through in a linear path. Yeah. It's a smart idea. Especially yeah. if you have to go find multiple uh, ladies to save. And uh, the first town, the first stage in this game is the town of Algeba from Castlevania 2. Uh, no multi-directional whipping. Sorry, Tyler. 
it's going to be tough for me and those birds then. Yeah. You can well, control your jumps in the air a little bit, though. You can like slow your momentum down, which is really nice. Instead of he can Simon kind of jump track. Simon jump far. Yeah. If this guy's like, I can maybe slow down a bit, which actually is not how the real world works. But well, whatever. once you get to that, once you get to the castle proper, I always had a problem with those knights with the big spears or halberds. Yeah. They suck. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they got range and they can take a few hits. Yep. Which I don't like that. And they like to put them right on the edge of where you got to jump up. Mm-hmm. So like as soon as you jump up, they're just going to push you off. Yeah. And then yeah. you're going to fall into a pit. Yeah. And then you're going to load a safe That's why state. the boomerang is essential. It's always funny now that I think like this has such like a, I imagine in Japan, this one in particular is quite popular because if they included Richter in Smash Brothers, American audiences wouldn't really have a basis of understanding for that right away. Yeah. But choosing Simon and then Richter, for us, it would probably be Simon, then Trevor. Yeah. Uh, to me, I'm like, Alucard. They need a Belmont, and it needs to be the original NES one for Smash. But if they brought another character, they. but what's nice about Richter is it is a uh, like image uh, swap, a character swap. Yeah, that's, that's what's important about it. Yeah. Uh, they could also, they should have just included like, and here's Simon, and, and here's Trevor, and here's Christopher, because they're all fucking Belmonts. Well, I mean, like, that's what they do with the Dragon Quest character, the hero. It's interesting that my palette swap. My yeah. introduction is the show. So, like, in my mind, Trevor is the standard. Yeah. And Trevor is my, my baseline. I so, doubt that's how Trevor actually acted, though. I think that was because Warren Ellis famously wrote what he thought the character should be like, because he never played the video game. He's a drunk. Yeah. <laughs> I just know from experience that dude would be drunk. Yeah. He'd be drunk all the time. Yeah. He's born in the off season. He's got a nice coat yeah. that he likes to vomit on. Uh, you can do a backflip in this game by double tapping jump, which I is like a quick that. back, uh, like back dash kind of, which is pretty cool. That's dope. Uh, if you collect gold, you could purchase boss replays showing the best strategies to beat bosses after you've already beaten them. This is something that they've done in a few games, which I think is a stupid. Addition, hey, you beat that boss. This is how you should have done it. Yeah, you idiot. That's not bad, though. And give us money to tell, uh, give us money. We'll tell you. Yeah, you we'll tell you why you're stupid. You stupid, dumb moron. Uh, some I think e- some people would find that interesting. They included something interesting in this game with item crashes. So your sub weapon, if you hit triangle or whatever that would be on what you're playing, uh, you do like an uh, ultra version. If you have the throwing dagger to like 100 daggers at once, uh, you can like jump up and I think it was at the cross where you do like that giant, like the entire screen just turns red for a second. Uh, yeah. And then the ax is like, whoa, like a the giant axe, the giant axe that comes out in a circle. How many does that cost though? Uh, I, I didn't pay attention to that. Uh, no. It costs a lot of hearts. Uh, I was able to do it multiple times and I didn't have all the hearts. So I felt like it couldn't have been that expensive. As, as soon as the soundtrack for this game started up, Nate's like, Oh my God, this is so nineties. And yeah. the dude's like wearing a headband and he's got the like sleeveless. He's, he's got a very like uh, late eighties, early nineties aesthetic. Instead of barbarian, you can see the look of Castlevania starting to shift a little bit. It's true. Yeah. And he, yeah. Richter's cool though. I do like Richter as a character and this game is just fantastic. I, I really do like it. There is a second playable character. Uh, it is a 12 year old girl named Maria Renard. You unlock yeah. her by rescuing her. Her attacks are based on animals, so she throws birds. So you'd like this lady. Yeah, revenge of the fucking birds. <laughs> yeah. She, like One of her main attacks is just throwing birds at things just right in front of her. <laughs> and she also has like a tiger and a dragon and a turtle. The turtle is like she just turns into a little like shell so yeah. enemies can't hit her. Can't throw the shell, though. That'd be, be a little too much like Mario. Yeah. <laughs> uh, she takes more damage than Richter. She attacks by hurling doves. She's smaller, can double jump and slide. She's considered like an easier version of this. Movement. Uh, I guess there's even like different dialogue where Dracula, like I can't believe I got beat by a little girl, like a 12 year old girl. <laughs> Is she funny. short enough to where like you're always crouching? So like normal attacks don't hit you. You're just always knee high. She is shorter. Yoda and Soul Calibur 4. <laughs> yeah. Where you just you can never use high attacks on her. Yeah. A little bit. Yeah. She is shorter. Uh, and yeah, this was remade for the Super Nintendo, like I mentioned, as Dracula X. Dracula X was for the Super Nintendo. Essentially a whole new game with the same story, not a remake or a port. It's considered non-canon. 
uh, because it's just the same story but a little different. Why would you choose that over the better version? Well, it's not a very good game either. And they removed the Dark Priest Shaft in America, and that's a crime. Shaft, Shaft, Shaft. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who is resurrecting Dracula? Can you dig it? And you really hate Shaft because I was supposed to be Belmont in the off season, and you brought him back. You dick. Yeah. yeah. My 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 plan was to work out my quads and bang bitches, and now I got to go kill Dracula. Thank this, you. This is not going to work out for me. You ruined my summer. And there is no voice acting uh, in this game in a, uh, the Super Nintendo version as well. It does look pretty good. I think the game itself looks nice. Yeah. I think the because you start out in that huge like the town's on fire. Yeah. And you got to fuck cool. around with that, and it looks fantastic like the animations. But you get to a certain point, and it's it doesn't control very well, and it's kind of boring yeah the super nintendo version is just inferior in so many ways so if you have yeah. the i mean castlevania requiem for the ps4 that is the best the way best to way play, play rondo of blood and symphony of the night now yeah. the only downside which we'll talk about symphony of the night on another episode uh is the voice acting they changed the most iconic voice some of the most iconic voice acting in video games and they changed it you didn't get to hear the original we'll do that uh, on the oh episode my God. Uh, what is a man <laughs> yeah <laughs> and, uh, yeah, we're going to continue our Castlevania discussion on our next episode. There is still many games to talk about. I, You know, even going into this, because I kind of wing it, as the uh, listeners know at this point, and I just add flavor, yeah. Uh I think you're the, I meat, had a you're lot the meat in our walls, Dylan. Yeah, I'm the, yeah. Meat in the, I'm the meat in the walls. I'm a nice <laughs> roast turkey. You know what? Like, you know, they injected it with butter beforehand and they nice. There was a, a over roast and then a deep roast. I'm going to put you right in this wall right there. Someone will find you later. <laughs> but I didn't realize I had this many opinions on Castlevania until I got here today. It. I didn't think to form so many opinions just playing for a couple hours yesterday across multiple games. But, I'm probably going to replay some of these when I get back. Yeah, and if you have Switch Online, you have, I, I don't know if they're yeah. actually on the NES or the Super Ooh, Nintendo. I don't think on the... I think on the NES they might have Castlevania 1. Do, well, if not, two. just go to the, the store on the Switch and get the Castlevania collection. The collection is very good. And it's got really great uh, art on the back end. You mm-hmm. can change it to the Japanese versions of games and see the differences if you want. Yeah, It's also got Kid Dracula. Uh, so the classic collection, uh, first is, official release of that in America too. It's on all systems. Get it, and the uh, they also have the advanced collection, which is great. And, and it's for its own reasons. For some reason, it's got Dracula X for the Super Nintendo on there. I think it's just they want uh, complete versions where like all these games have been released in it different collections. Really makes me wonder if they're going to port the less popular ones that come later. Well, I hope that they do the DS collection. That that would be amazing. Yeah, I they'd agree. have to change some mechanics though, so where you don't have to draw. They they could they could do it. I mean, like even Okami had to deal with oh, that. Could you imagine if you had to draw on the PlayStation touchpad? That oh, that's would, actually cool. It actually would work better than the DS one, I think, because you're playing the game. All of a sudden, you have to like grab a stylus and seal a boss. Like that shit was weak. I didn't hate it. I despised it. Okay. Uh, here are the dogs. Ha- here are the dog cast. We exist because of people like you. Thanks for listening. If you have a chance to write a review or to tell your friends about us, hey, there's this guy Dylan. He puts meat in your wall. Uh, tell him about that. You know, open up with that. I think please that's do a way to do that. Uh, if you have questions or thoughts about Castlevania, reach out to us on Twitter at Hot Dogcast or Instagram at Hair the Dogcast. And you can email us at Hair the Dogcast at gmail.com. We would love to hear from you. If you send us questions, we will read them on air. We will read them, and if you want access to a bunch of bonus episodes, all of our episodes much earlier, as well as our exclusive uh, podcast, Popcorn Dogs, where we talk about movies and television, mm-hmm. uh, check us out on Patreon at patreon.com slash hair the dogcast for as low as $3. Please support your, your creators you like. And executive producers, special thanks to Ryan, Chrissy, Nick, Tyler Keller, Kip, Brian Ward, and Katie Bone. We appreciate you for supporting us at the executive producer rank. You're great. Absolutely. And we are part of the HyperX Podcast Network. For more information, check out podcast.hyperx.com. And I think this was a very, very good start to our Castlevania discussion. Yeah, yeah it's going to be, it's going to be a good month. Yeah. Uh, up next, we have the extreme highs of Symphony of the Night, the extreme lows of Castlevania <sighs> sixty four. Bene. You know, yesterday I was in a Mega Media Exchange. Okay. And I saw a copy original copy of symphony of the night yeah ooh, nice. can you guess the price gentlemen was it the black bar or the black that's expensive 
How much do you think? I, I don't know if they know what they're selling, but I would say at least a hundred. Okay. Tyler, do you have any earthly clue? Uh, Price is right rules. 101. Wait. Yeah. Okay. You technically won then. Oh yeah. Uh, they were selling it for $150. I'm not surprised. Damn. And it looked in, it looked to be in relatively decent condition. And there was a part of me because we were doing this month. I was like, I do have a PlayStation. I could uh, do this. And then I was like, no, actually, no. No, wait, stop. Dylan, no. stop. I almost, It was between this and getting fitted for you. <laughs> thank you for choosing the wedding. I almost bought Castlevania Judgment on the Wii. They're selling a new version of that, which is the Castlevania fighting game for the Wii. No shit, really? It was $28, and it's supposed to not be great, but I'm like, I want it. <laughs> it's not bad. I, I mean, want I a got- fighting game where I have to use my controller to whip every time. That sounds great. Is that how it works? Some of it, depending oh. on who you play as. But. Okay, well, hmm? uh, we'll yeah. Thanks for tuning in and join us next week for more Castlevania discussion. Bye, guys. Bye. See you later. HyperX has refined their lightweight Cloud Stinger headset and now proudly presents the evolved Cloud Stinger 2. It still keeps the same rotating ear cups, swivel to mute microphone, and comfort but now adds two years of premium DTS Headphone X activation. Get even better in-game audio and a number of other refinements for the low, low price of $50. Available now at HyperX.com.